Well, welcome to Walk With Me Online, where we talk to the leaders in sports, business and entertainment. And given that this week was International Women's Day and this week, well, the stars sort of aligned a little bit that I happened to see my old mate, Sophie Marshall, who is now, she's the global product manager at Rip Curl. So she's really kicking ass. So I'm very happy to see what Sophie's been doing. But Thanks, Paul. I did happen to see what Sophie had actually post, posted in regards to, and I after the, seeing the movie last night, I've actually got to use the right terminology, Paul, and it's the 1993 surfing world champion in Pauline Mensa. How are you going? I'm great. You? I'm very good. Very excited to talk to the pair of you because I saw the movie last night and I get to talk to Soph as well. So now just a little bit of a backstory about how you and Soph had connected. I think to you, Soph, first, um, like how did all this come about? Because obviously you went and saw the movie and the movie's great for everyone out there that hasn't seen the movie. The movie's called Girls Can't Surf. The movie's obviously come out, great movie, and, and just talks about the journey that female surfing has taken from the, I suppose, that late 70s, 80s into the 90s. Um, but just tell everyone about you saw the movie and then you felt compelled to take some action. I did, Corey. So I obviously work at Rip Curl and I have a design team and we actually went across to Sorrento and had like a little team bonding night. We actually got the link sent from um, Mimi, who's doing the PR for the, for the movie. And I watched it and I was enraged um, and I was compelled and... I think I shed a couple of tears actually through the movie and and the next morning I woke up and I ran into my boss's uh, room in the morning, Brooke, and I said, I'm going to start a GoFundMe page for Pauline. And she was just like, okay, all right. Um, But little did she know, whenever I say I'm going to do something, I actually do it. So um, I enlisted um, some help with from Mimi as well, who's doing the PR for the company. And we were like, hey, we better ring Paul's and see if she actually wants us to do this. So luckily she said yes. And um, the, the page was set up. And I think within, oh my goodness, Paul's, was it like that weekend within a week? Yeah, like it was really slow for the first four or five days. And yeah. then on the weekend, Friday night to Saturday morning, it went up a thousand dollars an hour. It was incredible. <laughs> it was crazy. So I, um, we hit the, the the whole idea was we wanted to give Paul's her twenty five thousand dollars for the you know the world title check that she should have had that year. And then um, as soon as it hit that, I FaceTime Pauline and and we're both crying. I'm just <laughs> absolute excitement. I don't think I've ever been so excited about anything. And um, we're like, okay, well, Paul's is like, I'm going to have to, we're going to look at where the extra money can go. And Pauline's chosen three amazing charities, which is just absolutely selfless. So it just shows you the, the, the amazing person she is to be able to not only, you know, support these charities and, 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 you know, raise awareness as well. Everyone's talking about it. I've learned more about the autoimmune disease that Pauline's had, um, so, yeah, that's kind of how it's all happened. Now, by the way, Pauline, I think we've got to do some quick calculations here because 1993, 25 grand, I reckon there's a bit of interest that happens over that time. <laughs> so surely we'll, we're, we're entitled to a little bit more, surely. <laughs> well, uh, we'll talk about that with sponsors later, later on maybe, but um, with the GoFundMe, it's all about helping people in need. And um, yeah. I just feel that there's always people suffering in the world and we need to share the love. And I think if people shared the love a little bit more, the world would be a better place. So how did it feel um, from your position? Obviously you did the movie, but then how did it, what was the feeling from your end that all of a sudden you had this stranger called (laughs) Sophie um, that she had done what she'd done? It must have been pretty uh, humbling. Humbling, but um, really joyful, like, I kept saying to her, like, I can't believe you did this. It's so awesome. She's like, oh, it's nothing. I said, it's not nothing. I said, it still takes a special person to do that and to want to help others and to actually make it happen is not nothing. And not only is she helping me, but it's turning around helping others. And now because of the the love and the strength that I feel from the GoFundMe page, it's also given me the energy to try and influence people 
to do the right thing and be the right kind of people. It just so happens it's all happened when I'm a lot better to health wise. Yeah. So I do have the energy at the moment to do that. And I feel that um, what's happened has also been a natural healing. So just having the love and the support, I'm feeling better and better every day. And that was probably one of the things I said to Soph. I go, yeah, when she said she'd done what she'd done, she didn't have to do it. But like you said, she did. Exactly. I definitely didn't want to sit around and I don't know. I just, I just so got so compelled to help because I just, that, that movie not only brought up a lot of, of incidents in, in my career, positive and negative, um, just being in the surf industry, um, it, it just, yeah, I just, it, it was just completely and utterly something I just knew I had to do. And I, unfortunately I have sometimes do get these ideas and I just have to go and do them much to my husband's <laughs> uh, humor. And I just, yeah, it was just one of those things I just knew I had to go and do. And honestly, watching the movie again last night, I had people text me going, thank you so much for doing what you've done for Pauline because there's no other person in the world that deserves this more than her. Um, I've had those text messages and conversations with so many people after that movie. Um, that movie is going to, it's, it's going to create more than what I think Christopher, the producers went out to do. I think it's going to be one of those things that cause your, your daughters are going to watch even if you don't know surfing, I feel like it's 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 just one of those things that is going to be part of our history and part of how we're going to shape um, women in sport moving forward. And then what sort of emotions, Pauline, did, did it evoke for you? Like when you were watching that movie back and it'd be a little bit surreal knowing, watching all the hardship that you guys went through, how did it feel to then watch it back again, assuming I, I, I think you've seen the movie. So the interesting thing was I actually forgot how bad it was. Yeah. <laughs> and so I lived it and I still forgot it. And after I watched it, I couldn't believe I felt like all those amazing, um, like it really touches on you. It makes you laugh. It makes you cry, but it also inspires you. And even though I was in it, I still felt inspired and, I said to Christopher after seeing it on the big screen, I said, I really believe this movie is going to go really far. I've got, just got this gut feeling. I said, there's such a strong message in it. And it really shows up close our personalities, what we went through and what you can do if you put your mind to it. And um, when I left the Sydney theatre, the, the premiere in Australia, to see everyone was glowing when they walked out of the theatre. It was absolutely amazing. So... I can understand where Sophie got that inspiration as well. And I really hope that this just keeps on happening, not just in Australia, but around the world after people watch the movie, that it just becomes this massive change for, for, for women in general all around the world. Yeah, I must admit, Pauline, last night where I'm, uh, where I'm actually staying, I'm travelling at the moment and I'd already been to the gym in the morning. And then when I watched the movie again last night, I actually went to the gym for the second time last night because I think after I did, you hit it right on the head, I actually was, it was, it was very uplifting and made you feel like I'd already been thinking about doing a second workout and I go, uh -uh, no excuses now, not after seeing that. <laughs> <laughs> That's too funny. It's funny you said that because a friend of mine, I posted it saying that it's in a local theatre and I just found out that the local theatre was doing the Q&A yeah. and it wasn't advertised. And then one of my friends wrote, oh, I'd really love to go, but I'm broke. So I private messaged him and said, there's $50 in the letterbox. You just have to come and trim some trees. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he, um, he went and watched it and he said it really like touched him like he couldn't believe. And he said, I knew you had a hard time, but not that hard a time. And, and anyway, after he watched it, he had the same energy as you. He's like, I think I'm going to go do some yoga now. And it was like <laughs> 11 o'clock at night. <laughs> oh, it's honestly, it's so good. I shouted my friends last night too, because I just knew I was like, nah, I'm, I'm paying it forward. You guys have to come and see this. Um, made my son go and watch it as well. And he was immensely, he was so stoked afterwards. I was like, what do you think, mate? And he goes, oh, wow, it's so good, mum. I think he watch, wants to watch it again too. So, yeah, you have, like, every single person has to watch this movie. 
And it's nice too to know that um, everybody feels the same way, that they want to see it. And I've seen it four times now myself. And I find that each time you watch it, you see a different part where you're just like anticipating the moment. Like the funniest part I find in the movie is um, when all the girls are paying out flea shawls style. Oh, yeah. He has his little poofy hair, you know, just that kind of stuff. You're just like anticipating it to come. So it's just really funny. Oh, totally. The music's really well done. And also too, for me, I obviously obsessed with fashion and old surf fashion. So like when I get my own copy, I'll be stocking it just going, oh my God, look at that print and <laughs> just all the old stubbies and, you know, the Coke ad as well. I was like, oh my God, I sang this, the, the song and I was like, oh, I didn't think I was that old, but I obviously remember it. <laughs> now, now, when you look back at it, Pauline, that it, it just shows an unbelievable story of that resilience and the how did you, that, that resilience that all of you have as a collective, but just that focus to keep going against all the odds and all the things that were thrown against you. Like when you, now, when you look back at it, how does it feel like, where did you guys get all that resilience from? Because it just seemed like you had obstacle after obstacle after obstacle put in front of you. I think that just goes to show our, our absolute love for the sport. Yeah. So we well and truly loved it and you just do anything to do something you love. And I think for me it helped growing up with three brothers and then growing up out of Bondi. So it was well and truly character building already at home before I went on tour. And then I kind of felt like it was the norm because in the 80s it was like that, you know, like I said, on the beach every day you're dealing with... And, um, you know, and then when I went on tour, it was like, oh, you know, they're going to stick the women in these crappy waves. It was like, yeah, like I said, quite normal. And that, that, was, a, that was a real game-changing moment, I felt like, in the movie too, that when you decided there was no more, like when you had to hold the line about not actually going into the surf without giving too much away, but it was re- like a real fork in the road type moment for you guys. Yeah, sorry, what was that? I just got it interrupted then. Oh, no, I was just saying, like, when you when you guys made the decision about where you said no more going out in the bad surf and you basically had to sit in on the beach and saying we're not going out. Oh, yeah, that was incredible because there'd been, like, three competitions in a row or four in a row where it was just so bad. And then at Jeffreys Bay, it was a, a higher tide. There was absolutely no waves. And every 10 minutes there was one that would just break. And you might have been able to do one Rio and then end up on the rocks. And so we all walked down the beach and I was just, I just said to the girls, you know what, just sit here. They're like, what? I go, yep, let's just sit here, don't paddle out. What are they going to do? Mm-hmm. So I was absolutely shitting myself going, oh, no, I'm going to get in so much trouble. But I thought there's no waves. And I guess a big fear of while I was doing that as well is not just worrying about the, the officials, you're worried about, if one of those girls just breaks out and goes in the water, then it's it's over. And that happened a couple of times. But at this time, everybody was staying strong and true to themselves. And so they all went, no, nah, we're not going out. And then the heat didn't run. And, and then we didn't get fined or nothing happened. So we're like, wow, we do have a voice. And it was not long after that that we created a, um, you know, a group of women that pushed forward for things that we believed in. That's like, honestly, that's probably one of my most favourite part of the movies because I could just, I know at the surf comp how stressful it is and, you know, you've got the head judge and you've got the sponsors and the pressure and everything else to like, I know, you know, there's got to be waves and everything else like that. So, you know, to push you guys out in the, the crappiest waves and then you guys to say, nah, stuff you, that's huge. Yeah, and see, again, that was like just standing up for something that we believed in, right? And then they're saying that we've got it against them. Can you imagine? We just didn't want to surf non-existent waves. Just like they they wouldn't want to. Yeah, exactly. And then we're we're rebels. (laughs) Oh, the gaslighting for women, it's just so annoying. It's like, hey, you guys wouldn't surf that crap. Why Why should we? Exactly. Now, Pauline, one of my my favourite parts in the movie and then I always love the backstory behind an amazing performance 
Um, the day, I think it was where you are going to become the champion in 1993, where um, if you just tell everyone to explain the arthritis and what you had to deal with on that day. And I just thought it was an amazing performance. You gave the analogy once the siren went off that you went into a different zone, but just give everyone a little bit of the backstory and, and what you were feeling on, on the day. So basically I got really unwell when I was in Japan and then the lead up to the Hawaiian event, I was really worried that I wouldn't be able to surf at all. And my coach was even acting like, yeah, you'll be right, you'll be right. But inside he was like going, oh, my God, there's no way Pauline's going to be able to surf. Mm. So basically my arthritis came back so bad I had it in every single joint and I could barely move. And then I started going on a special diet, um, different exercise, trying different therapies, and I still wasn't getting any better. And then I still decided just to go to Hawaii early. And when I got there, just the thought of going out in the ocean was like, no way, I'm going to get pummeled. So I um, went to the doctors, said to them, look, I'm going for a world title and my body's in a really bad way, especially my hip. I was really twisted around. So like if I was trying to walk in a straight line, my hip would be half twisted around to the other, the other where the other hip is and be walking really, really crooked. And then after about 10 steps, I'd fall on the ground. So I go to the doctor, try and get some um, um, steroids and she put it in the wrong spot. So it did nothing. Then I saw another professional surfer who said, come to Kauai. I've got someone that might be able to help you. So I went there and it kind of was a bit like, oh, I didn't think it was going to work. This guy had put your body in time. So he like touches different parts of your body and then, he says you got like a sort of a different pulse or something. And he said, you'll feel better after. Anyway, I thought it was hogwash while I was in there. Mm. But um, I got about 20% better. And then there was only another week left for the contest and I still couldn't free surf. And then the contest day came and I was so scared. Like I got up four o'clock in the morning, got massaged. And I was like, oh, man, there's no way I'm going to be able to surf. I can't. I was still walking crooked, still couldn't straighten my arms bend my wrist, move my neck. And then um, I'll get my contest jersey, hobble down to the water's edge and start paddling out. And I was really scared. I have to say that I was freaking out because it was you know, a good solid 10 feet. Oh and then as soon as the hooter went, I surfed like there was absolutely nothing wrong with me. I just became possessed. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you see the footage, I still surf like there was nothing wrong as well. And then as soon as the heat finished, walking back up the beach again, hobbling back up the beach. So, you know, I use that analogy a few times now of it's kind of like if a parent sees a child under a, a car mm. and, and they had to lift the car off the kid, they'd do it easy because of the adrenaline. And that's what I found happened to me in the heat. It's the adrenaline that got me through. And then just on that as well, like I think you were saying that you had to you couldn't straighten out your arms. You basically, you had to punch virtually into the board to get up. Yeah. So it was actually not just then, like a lot of my life I've had to learn to completely surf differently. And so that time as well as along as with other times I had to, um, so when you, your elbows don't totally straighten and you, you can't bend your wrists at all, the only way to get up is to use your knuckles. And so I had to punch into the, the rail of my board quite often to get up. And then, you know, even when I was surfing on my backhand, I almost never knew where the lip was. I had to guess. Because if you look at any footage all the time of me talking and stuff, it's always my eyes moving, but my necks never had a lot of movement. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I just sort of guess where the lip is. And and this is, I suppose, what led to Sophie um, and, and spoke about, obviously, the $25,000 that you didn't get. But is it just amazing when you think back now that, you were actual the world champion and they decided that year that you, you, there was no money for it. Yeah. I was so disappointed because I just thought it was a given that everybody got a bonus at the end. And to know that I didn't get a bonus is like, what, why not? <laughs> and um, you know, that's, that was really hard too. But for me, the never ending, not having sponsors and then hearing it's because I don't have the look but yet I won so many events. I just kept winning event after event. And 
And I really thought once I won the world title, I thought that would come running for me. And then um, my coach heard off one of the main companies that he, they said to him off record, um, she doesn't have the look that we want. And he was so mad. He said to them, like, you know, come on, she's an amazing surfer. Sorry, she just doesn't have that, that look we're after. And I was just like, you know what, stuff all of you. I'll just go have a, <laughs> um, a raffle. So then I went around Byron and just got all the local people to support me and give me a whole lot of prizes. But I didn't kind of think after I got the prizes that I'm going to have to go and sell all these raffle tickets. <laughs> so it was quite a slog to get back on tour, but um, I did what I had to do. Now, I know so few, I know you had a question about, um, I think it might have been about Pauline and she might have had to, something in regards to her hair. Oh, yeah, I think this is probably what they, I think out of everything, the lesson that Pauline has really, you know, rammed home is, you know, you've just got to be you and don't change for anyone else. And when Pauline told me the story about when you had, to, when you dyed your hair blue. Yeah, blonde and blue, yeah. Yeah, like just to get, like to, to be noticed. I, I just, I don't know, it just really, I think that component of, not having sponsorship really, really, it, it's just, it just didn't sit well with me and, and it's just not right. And I just think from now it's like, you know, Pauline stood strong and didn't change herself because she's, you know, she, she knows who she is. And I feel like that is just such an important message for women and all, all women, but also sports women, women, um, you know, to just really love yourself and, and not change because, you know, at the end of the day, that's how can you be authentic and, and, and be the best version of you when people are, you know, trying to change who you are, which isn't right either. And, you know, I was, since I was unwell for like a couple of years and, and now it's, I've only just sort of got back onto watching the surfing and being like being on Instagram is all new to me. And I've started following people and I'm blown away at some of these young girls that all feel that they have to have their swimsuit suits up their bum. I'm like, what is it with that? Like, seriously. And it's maybe I'm old fashioned, but this whole pouting and turning around and taking photos of your bum, am I like just old fashioned? So I don't no. get it. Do you know what, Pauline? It's so funny because obviously we sell swimwear and um, a lot of cheeky and skimpy pants. And I'm always the one, like the daggy mum who wants to wear the full pant. I'm like, hey, like, I'm a, I just don't want to see my kids students and parents and stuff to see my butt like that's just old it's it's old school but, I, but I, I, I'm with you yeah I think that, that a lot of the kids like fair enough if you're comfortable doing that fair enough but I think there's a lot that aren't and it's unfortunate that that they're getting influenced to do it because of the ones you know they're getting the pressure on them that's so true and, I, and that's where it all starts is that and it's like just because you don't feel comfortable doesn't mean that you know there's n that you're any less. And I think that social media has played a really big part in in you know creating these stereotypes of these girls wearing skimpy pants. And yeah, cool if you feel comfortable and you want to rock it, go for it. But there's a shit ton of other people that don't feel comfortable, and we shouldn't feel bad if we don't want to wear that. Exactly. Now, Pauline, I reckon a lot of our experiences uh, make us, and I, you know, I think, yeah, the journey that we all go through and the and the life lessons that you learn, and obviously you love a surfing, um, but is it also is it a little bit frustrating that you wouldn't mind just some of the money and the recognition that the girls are getting nowadays? Did you ever think in your wildest dreams you would see a day where there'd be equal pay? in the sport i really didn't think it would happen in my lifetime especially yeah. how slow it progressed when i was on tour and then just to hear it just out of the blue like i didn't hear any lead up or anything like that i was just driving my car it's a beautiful spot that i love at home here and right when i was going down the hill it's the most gorgeous view they just announced equal pay in women's surfing and i just started absolutely bawling my eyes out i was so happy and i'm like going Oh my God, I just wanted to call Pam and Jody and just go, did you hear? Have you heard what's happening? And, um, you know, yeah, it's a pity that we didn't have it when we had it, but I just, I still loved what I did. And mm. um, 
my mum taught me very strongly that there's a positive in every negative and you know the the negative was I wasn't supported but the positive was still to this day I'm one of the most winningest surfers in history because I had to be if I didn't win an event there's no way I was getting to the next one and so that's something positive that came out of it and the other thing is I think I had way more fun than anyone (laughs) I had so much fun and I didn't have to like you know, because the girls are all worried about getting in trouble with their sponsors of like, you know, there was a bit of nudity back then and a bit of craziness and um, you could just do what you wanted. You didn't have to worry about, you know, today I just feel like nobody's even showing a little bit of, I mean, there's a bit of character, but it, no. everybody seems like they're all held back. You know what I mean? That's so true, Paulina. I feel like the fact, yes, that, the crappy thing of not having a sponsor, but yet only you could say amazing positive out of it. You could be you and not have to worry, you know, not have to worry what you say or, you know, because sometimes sponsors can be really, you know, quite dictative in terms of like what you can say and, you know, what you want to, what you want to portray. So yeah, you just had fun. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know where my train of thought comes from. Like, it could be from being unwell for so, so long of my life, like with my arthritis and now with this new autoimmune disease. Um, when I wake up and I'm pain-free, life is just amazing. And so, like, money can't give you no pain. So that's maybe why I think, like, I do as well. I have a different outlook because of, like you said, the, the journeys that you have. And that's been my journey is that, um, yeah, like – having more is not not going to give you a happy life really I mean yeah you don't want to have the stresses of paying bills and stuff like that that can be hard but um again like if I wake up without pain I'm just so so happy do you reckon in your case Pauline that you you had to be I think you got a hell of a lot more gratitude for all the small things like and that and that's why you're so much probably more content about everything that you, you, you did achieve. Yeah, definitely. Um, like I was so content what I achieved for me. Like you said, oh, am I bummed that I missed out on the the money and all that sort of stuff? I'll be honest, I was really sad I missed out on the recognition. Yeah. So even now, like that's why I'm so happy to get the recognition because that means a lot to me. It means way more to me than the money. Yeah. You know, the money, of course, it's a bonus and it helps things, but um, support and love is an important thing for everybody in life, I think. Yeah. And that's, you know, you're talking about possibly doing things later for athletes later. It's, um, yeah, it's very much needed. And I suppose speaking of some of our, set, like the likes of the Lane Beachleys and the Steph Gilmores, like how... How proud are you of, of our girls and what they've achieved? And do you feel like you've got a, even just a little part of that success that they've been able to achieve? Oh, absolutely. Like, you know, you always have to look at the women before you and, and, and understand where, where you come from. And I think Stephanie's been the most humble, amazing multi-world champion in history in the men and women. And, and the other thing I never thought would happen is to know that, you know, you always saw the Australian men sort of dominating the tour and, and we were kind of like shafted a bit in the background. But now it's like Stephanie Gilmore is it. Everybody loves her. She's representing Australia. Um, you know, she's way ahead of any of the guys. So it's just absolutely incredible where women's serving has gone today. Now, uh, now, St- Sophie, unless you've, uh, I've got one final question that I always finish with, but I will let you have, if you've got anything to ask, I know that you've, you've probably got maybe a, a question or two. Um, and I think I do know the answer to this after um, listening to a podcast. What is your favorite, what was your favorite break? And also to what is your favorite place in the world to travel to? Um, you're going to think I'm, I'm favouritising like where you're from, but you know, it's Winky Pop. I love Winky Pop. And I actually do love staying with my friend Angela down there because she spoils us rotten. And we had another friend, a Japanese friend that used to come and stay. And um, 
I'm coming down there for the wave pool soon. And she's like, so are you coming down for the weekend? I'm like, no, I'm a bit worried because of COVID. We're just like coming in to surf the, the pool and leaving. She's like, I can't believe you're not coming down. So uh, I'll have to make it at another time, I think. But uh, I definitely want to make a trip down there. Oh, yeah, Winky Pop. I think I sit and film Winky Pop many a times over the past couple of weeks. It is probably our family's favourite break. Not for me. It's a bit too gnarly for me. Um, and what about travelling in terms of, like, countries? Did you love Japan? I feel like you would love Japan. I love Japan, but I didn't like... Um... It was quite polluted and stuff like that and, and the way they kept the beach I didn't like but the whole crazy culture and all those little nicky knacks and just just the way the people were, I loved it. And the food, it's like absolutely my favourite food. Same, favourite food, hands down. Now, Pauline, I, when I've been doing these interviews over the journey, interviewed a lot of different people, but it's um, it probably has a bit of a reference. This question always started from my ugly finger, so it's now... It's what, what we call the fork in the road moment. Now, there could have been a, di a number of different fork in the road moments when it came to Pauline Menza, but where is the one fork in the road moment for you that things could have gone either way, but have gone probably the other way for the good? For the good? Um, hmm. You got me on that one. Probably... I'm just glad that for the good, I guess, that when I first started my career and I had such bad arthritis that I still stuck to what I wanted to do yeah. and I believed in myself. So I could have stopped and not become a pro surfer or become a pro surfer and thank God I decided to stay. Well, no, I think uh, you definitely did make the right choice there now. Look, that's, uh, we're nearly, I suppose we're out of time, but look, on behalf of everyone associated with Walk With Me online, uh, look, to be able to sit down and especially on the back of last night where I was able to enjoy the movie and sit down and it did inspire me to get off my ass and get to the gym uh, last night. But look, to be able to see that journey in terms of what you guys had been through, incredibly tough at the time but it's great to be able to sit on the other side and reflect and go shit how far we've come and and how much more advanced the girls are in surfing now so look on behalf of everyone a, a massive thank you pauline and i know um i know sophie knowing her passion for sport uh, for surfing over a long period of time and then you can see how passionate she is about it and i think even she's pretty chuffed i know that she's been able to do something for you but i know that yeah, she is uh, unbelievably, I think, humbled herself that she gets to even just have contact with a legend like yourself in, in surfing. So I know, Sophie, you might have a few words to say before we wrap it up. Oh, thanks, Corey. Yeah, I'm just so humbled and so stoked that I had the opportunity to help, help Pauline and the movie again. Everyone has to see it. It is just so amazing. And also to just Pauline's message of... of <sighs> be you like that's 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 just so so needed in in today's society so yeah i'm i'm just humbled and so stoked that i could help help her out yeah and we're awesome we got we're good friends now we can't we can't stop contacting each other friends for life <laughs> we're up to forty five thousand dollars as of today amazing absolutely amazing just just so brilliant no well, it's um it's it's fantastic i think for something it's it's great to be able to see a story like that not only see the movie but then you when you see this happen on the other side so we finally got that check for 993 i know you're not going to take the interest pauline but um i'm sure all the extra money is going to go to some of the charities that you're passionate about for everyone out there, you can go to walkwithmeonline.com to see not only this episode, but previous episodes. And uh, a big thanks to Pauline and my mate So for doing it. So thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you.